So you spoke about how you, you know, uh, started to become a bit more of an advocate for transparency, but can you um, just elaborate a little bit on that? What, why did you, as a high-frequency trader, want to engage the SEC to bring transparency to the issues around these special order types? What was sort of your goal there? Well, I think in the end, I came to the conclusion that if you weren't playing the HFT game, uh, well, as you could improve your execution performance quite considerably by using some of the techniques and order types, that really the entire ecosystem itself had um, been distorted and, and that there was really a situation where you either had to join them and become a pure um, you know, stock uh, you know, trader, it, you know, a, a high frequency trader just focused on the stock market and it, it, you may know I was more on the option side of the business. Right. So um, I felt that the stock market, you know, at the end had basically become so distorted that it was negatively impacting other algorithmic trading traditions and really destroying the, the diversity that should exist in the market. Right. Okay, okay. Well, uh, you know, we can uh, kind of take it from there to go on to the next question, which is, uh, uh, my question was about exchange officials who said that their order types and the, the, the work is fully disclosed. Um, would you agree with that statement? Or why yeah, or why well, I mean, a good example would be uh, queue jumping, which is a feature that is uh, uh, often uh, marketed uh, directly to, to firms, um, to high frequency traders primarily, uh, is not in, in, you know, in any way uh, supported by exchange documentation. Uh, there are quite a number of, of the other perks, many of which are not disclosed yet, which are not uh, documented in any capacity. Um, and I, you know, what happened with me is I, I really came to the conclusion that if I had not, uh, you know, it, it wasn't just you know, a smart person could figure things out if they had access to, to the documentation. I think a lot of the features people think are documented, if you actually go there right. you, and you look into the documentation, they aren't. Mm -hmm. So how do people learn about them? They learn about them from other people in, in the industry. And it's a very closed and, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a, a club right. right now that uh, really has to be broken yes. for, for the markets to move on. So then what advice might you have for, let's say, the buy side traders who are operating in markets where high speed traders might have an edge and, you know, what can they do? Uh, what, what, what would you tell them? Well, the first step is to realize that the, um, the features and the word types used by HFT, um, the, these exchanges have become so dominated by HFT oriented activity that if, if you aren't using those features and those order types in the correct way, uh, you're, you're really on the, on the wrong side of the, of the slippage equation. It's not about picking up the rebate. It's about um, getting um, really a fair and neutral access to the exchange. And if you're not using an HFT-oriented exchange correctly, uh, you're probably falling into many of the, uh, what I refer to as abuses that, uh, that I experienced prior to learning about uh, how these features work. Right. So uh, you got to learn how to use the exchange correctly, mm -hmm. and until the market, you know, until regulators step in and change the, the microstructure, uh, pretty much uh, it's really an obligation of the sell side brokers and the buy side to operate and access the more markets more like an HFT would. Right. right. Uh, so I don't, you know, I'm not really trying to advocate, you know, for HFT. I'm really advocating for transparency, documentation on these features, and then a general knowledge across the industry that these features matter. Right. Um, getting to the top of the queue matters. If you don't use the mechanisms to compete correctly, you're going to be at the back of the queue, and that's disadvantaging uh, you or your client. Right. Now, before you came in today, I noticed that um, you speak at quite a lot of industry events. Um, you're going to be speaking at ours. Trade tech. Why is it important, do you think, to uh, talk about this with the industry, or to just kind of be in front of people and you know be spreading the word? Well, I felt at, at one point, um, you know, that you know either there'd be 
you know, significant backlash and I'd have to defend myself versus uh, these allegations. That was my original concern. Right. Uh, but, you know, what's happened more recently is, uh, you know, the feedback is you're right about these details, um, but people don't want to talk about them. And it, there's kind of, you know, we're in a situation where we either need to eliminate the features from the market or we need everybody to know about them and, and operate um, right. you know, correctly. Um, so, so I'm doing that now because I'm kind of the, you know, one of the primary individuals who kicked this uh, off. I'd say there are other people who are very um, happy with what, what I'm doing. I just like to see them out there uh, also right, uh, right. educating. How long, and I know we, we, we uh, talked a lot about this and we didn't uh, necessarily speak about these uh, forward-looking questions, but um, you know, how long do you think it will take for the industry to kind of band together and really kind of get a hold of this? I think the, the first step is literally um, you have a you know, huge, you know, the major uh, sell-side investment banks uh, need to do a deep dive and understand how HFT is operated. I mean, it came out of nowhere, right. uh, and they have a huge amount of catch up to do. Uh, right. They're probably five, six years behind, you know, the HFT crowd. Uh, I think it's going to be difficult to to have a real meaningful dialogue until uh, mm -hmm. the banks do the the real, you know, real work um, to 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 learn about. Be you know, really a comprehensive feature set. And I, I'm trying to uh, point people in the right direction with some of the articles I've done on the tab. Right, uh, right. On the other hand, uh, the as I said, I think the exchanges have not been uh, transparent. I think yeah. that they have um, treated different customer bases quite differently, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think um, they're going to need to uh, come clean and come forth with, yeah. with uh, and treat. Customers with the same level of uh, of, uh, of of information provision and, and transparency, and right. uh, we're not seeing that either uh, yet. I think uh, so. It's a little bit of a um, uh, called a matchmaking situation yes, right yes. now. Yes. We need the banks to to really lean on the exchanges, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's um, that's starting now. Right. It's definitely in the last six weeks. There's definitely a lot of of uh, activity mm -hmm. uh, be in, with regard to the, the topic I just uh, described, but right. um, we're just at the beginning of it. Just at the beginning, yes. One more question for you, um, and, and uh, if this is too uh, controversial, you don't have to answer, but um, just as someone who's seen both sides of the HFT um, industry and, and uh, understands it in and out, uh, an argument I hear a lot is uh, that they're just faster. Do you think that that argument will continue to hold up, or has that kind of have we all realized there's more to it than that? Um, I think what I was, I mean, I mean that I fell for that that argument. I mean that uh, if you're using the wrong order types and executing the wrong way, uh, you're going to have my experience. Uh, I got faster and faster and faster, and I was just the first guy to fall into the trap. Yeah. And it got, Ridiculous uh, <laughs> to the point where I thought I had a bug. That's what the story about Dark Pulse was. Right. Um, so, um, you know, the story of HFT is really that the microstructure features, that, that's where the key advantage was. Yeah. It wasn't speed, speed right. was necessary to extract the value of those features. Right. And, um, uh, you know, the way I think of it is you walk into your house, you know, open the front door, you walk into your house, and someone's standing in your foyer, you say, how do you get there? The guy goes, I was really fast, I ran by it. No, actually, he took the back door. <laughs> so, uh, right, right. And so that's what we're trying to do here is, is, is enforce across the industry transparency so that these back doors either are known to everyone or they're, um, Eliminated, and as I said, right. uh, Q jumping was was one of them. That mm -hmm. it was it's extremely important to HFT profitability. Right, right. Uh, and it was not generally known about until you know six eight weeks ago. Right. 
Well, Haim, thank you so much for coming down and speaking with me. I'm sure our readers and everyone out there will be very interested to hear this and to hear you speak some more at Trade Tech when that comes up. So I uh, just want to thank you again. All right, thank you. All right.